So I just bought this massive box off of eBay, and it contains a lot of WWE action figures, but look at it. It looks like it was beat to hell. I mean, what am I looking at? It looks like they threw it down a flight of stairs. And I say that often about packages, but this one, I'm being, I'm being dead ass serious. I don't think I'm joking around with this one. Look at this package. It's either that or the, it looks like a DRUG meal out here, you know? Gotta keep it clean for YouTube terms of service. This thing looks ridiculous, but we did buy this on eBay and I don't even remember what's in here. I just saw a lot on eBay of figures and I really don't bid unless I know that it's a pretty decent deal, right? But I think I got it for a good deal. You guys can let me know down in the comment section below. Pay $200 for this bad boy, but we're gonna crack it open and see what's all inside. Also, also, I'm not clarifying this as a My Damn Halls episode, so I'm not using the trusty knife, unfortunately. So we're gonna have to punch it open. We're just joshing, but I, I can't, this is, like, the next episode of My Damn Halls is episode 100, so I need some cool ideas for that down in the comment section below. Also, I can't put the Ziggler edit in here because it wouldn't be fair. This is not My Damn Halls episode 100. That's gonna be a lot more special and big deal. Where in the hell is my knife? All right, so I did unbox it here, man. And this, I'm going to be real, this box looks like this entire thing. All these figures are going to smell like cigarettes, man. Just look at them. Hopefully not, though, man. What we're going to do is dive into this box one by one, and we're just going to pull each figure out. Now, it does look like they're in individual bags, or they are lotted into these bags. So let's open the first bag. So in this first bag, let's dive into each figure. Also, I just hope that they're not all beat to shish, because that'll suck too. But all right, man, our first figure, we have this elite Braun Strowman that is kind of beat up. He's pretty beat up, and he has a waist, a loose waist. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is try to revive these. So if they have paint chip, if they have loose joints, I'm going to do my best to try and fix them up. And we'll see. We'll see if I can clean these guys up and make them, you know, at least just 2% worth a damn. Our next figure is going to be a figure that kind of looks like that TikToker, I don't remember his name, is it Aldo or something? Who makes pretty funny videos that are super random? Tell me that don't look like that guy. We have a Carrion Cross. This is a hilarious Carrion Cross basic, actually. This is hilarious, man. I love, I, I feel like we haven't done a classic unboxing like this in a very long time, so this is fun to, to get on here and just kind of shoot the shish and unbox some figures, but this this is a hilarious Carrion Cross. My God, you talk about throwback, Bradley. We have a Zeb Coulter figure. Look at that head sculpt. I think this is actually ahead of its time. The head sculpt likeness is nice. He always had a very unique look with the long cloth shirt. He's got that super baggy pants. He's got the vest over the shirt. Was never a fan of the guy, no offense. Next up, we have a standard basic Shinsuke Nakamura. Now again, the goal of this video is for you to let me know down below, did I overpay for this bi big box of figures? We will discuss it, but we have a basic Shinsuke. Nothing run of the mill, but I do like the red kick pads. Oh my god. The unique thing is, again, I do not remember exactly what's in this box, but I didn't even remember this Rey Mysterio being a part of the box. So we have an orange Rey Mysterio basic. I remember hating on this basic so much. It reminds me of Halloween. I just hate this head sculpt. It's just not very good, in my personal opinion. Next up, we have... We have a WrestleMania 34 Elite Kevin Owens KO Mania 2. Head sculpt is all busted to hell, and the left shoulder is pretty loose. Dude, if every single one of these elites has loose joints, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw myself out of a window. I mean, my lord. Next up, we have a Miz basic that I've never owned. Pretty decent head sculpt on here, though, I like. I like the attire, too, but it's just a standard Ms. Basic, nothing crazy or over the top. And the this version of Basics was terrible. This era of Basics was such a legendary fail. I mean, dude, my God. Now, I will say, this is Elite 65 Ronda Rousey, which is my least favorite Elite of all time, possibly. This is up there for my least favorite of all time. It is dreadful. It's truly dreadful, but she just feels so damn... I mean, I don't know. It's not the, it's not the loosest of all time, but it's just... Oh, man, you talk about horrendous. Bulky jacket arms, which you wouldn't think is that bad, but they're single-jointed. Then she has painted on shirt belly button. This loose vest deal that gets in the way. No sculpting on the crotch for a belt or anything. She's supposed to be in these long pants. They just look painted on. Only thigh cut. No shin cut, boot cut, foot cut. Basic feet. Single jointed knees. The worst elite of all time. Definitely up there. Easily, man. Let me know what your least favorite elite is down in the comment section below. Moving on forward, we do have Elite 56 AJ Styles in basic form. So this is essentially Elite 56 AJ Styles, but in basic form, which is exactly what I just said you dumb moron. Oh, crap. Okay, we have an interesting one. We have the WrestleMania 36 Elite Mick Foley or Cactus Jack, whatever you want to say. This is that dreadful head sculpt that looks like he is just in agony. And he doesn't have any feet or the vest. So that's that's great to know. Didn't notice this in the listing either, man. Pay attention to your listings. Not actually in the worst condition, but the head sculpt is dreadful. And probably the best figure in this entire video, which is pretty beat up for the most part, is going to be this Ultimate Edition Finn Balor. Now, one thing you could say
say is, oh, it's just like post-match Finn Balor, because right, he's he's got some chipping in his paint and stuff. It does kind of look like he's been in a match, so that is kind of cool. I actually kind of like that. It kind of looks like he's it's ring-worn, you know, but he definitely has some paint chip and stuff. I will have to fix this guy up in some sort of capacity, but Ultimate Finn Balor, this is possibly the best figure in here, mo uh, probably the most rare, unless we have a rare find that I forgot about. It's a damn good figure. We have Ultimate Edition Finn Balor, one of my favorite Mattels ever. Where's the update, Mattel? All right, man, we're moving on to the next bag. Why is it taped? Ah, good God in heaven, man. The next bag was taped to the floor of the box, so... All right, we have another classic and another one of my favorite elites. Elite 63, Shelton Benjamin in the white and gold. What a beauty. What a great figure. I remember this figure releasing like it was yesterday. Next up is one of the better figures from Elite 69, and that it has kind of a loose shoulder right there, but one of the better figures from Elite 69 as part of one of the best waves of all time in WWE Elite figure form. Elite Series 69, Bobby Lashley. Great attire. First time on the line, Bobby Lashley. What a great figure this was, and it came with a slew of accessories. Speaking of Elite 69, we do have Elite 69 Champa, another fantastic piece. Great formula on this guy. Doesn't have any of the accessories, but not the biggest deal of all time. Has some paint chip and wear, but not the worst condition either, which is a good sign. We have a Rockers Elite Shawn Michaels GameStop exclusive or Retrofest, I think it was, which had the really cool arcade packaging. Always liked that Shawn Michaels. Pretty underrated, even though it has that modern arms, the single jointed modern arms, which I hated, but I always like this gear. Next up, we have a GM or a Commissioner style Triple H or backstage. Triple H. Looks like he got bloodied up or something. Gonna have to do something about that head sculpt. Maybe I can clean it up. Pretty good base body, though, for a guy in suit, so that's cool. Here's a good one. We have Elite 81 Stunning Steve Austin, which is a part of the worst wave in WWE Elite history, in my personal opinion. Elite Series 81. What a dreadful one, but we do have the Hollywood Blonde Stone Cold or Steve Austin. We also have a Macho Man, and this Macho Man, is this not that WrestleMania Greats Entrances style figure, or this may be a throwback basic. I can't remember. I want to say this is is that basic that came with the entrance cart, but I could be wrong. Got Macho Man. We have a damn Cody Rhodes unmatched series number or unrivaled series four. I'm sorry, Cody Rhodes. This is before he had the neck tattoo, so that just shows the age of it. But the green and black attire is pretty sweet. To be able to do a little something something with this guy. Oh man, blast from the past. We have a B team Curtis Axel. Look at this old Curtis Axel, man. Forgot this even existed. Decent little head sculpt on the guy. Got the golden black pants on there. It's crazy how many WWE talents Mattel has made that's just no longer around. Oh. Oh man, we have one of my favorite AEW figures of all time. It is the Kenny Omega AEW Unmatched Series number one figure. Such a beautiful piece. This will this will stand the test of time. I still need to do a video on the importance of this figure and just Kenny Omega's official figure overall. What a huge day it was for the Unmatched Series one, the Unrivaled Series four, the Supreme. What a moment in history. If you know, you know. Next up, we have the Network Spotlight Kurt Angle figure, which again has a little bit of beat ups, got some red on it. I definitely need to clean these guys right after this video but I need to touch these up I need to see if any of them are worth a damn you know clean these guys up fix them up and see if we have some value here last figure in this box is going to be the Wrestlemania 36 Elite Matt Hardy I think it is pretty good figure it does look like his right shoulder is a little loose but damn man I am I can't lie I'm a little bit disappointed if all these figures were in decent condition I feel like our money would already be made back but I don't know we'll have to take a look at it you know fix them up like I said and see what we can do but Ah, oh, man. Still a great figure nonetheless. And we're moving on to our final little bag of figures here. I'm mistaken, there's actually two bags, but let's dive into it. But we do have a Pete Dunn basic. I don't know what this came with. Did this come with the NXT War Games set? I can't remember off the top of the dome, but I do like the gear. The black and yellow is pretty sweet for the bruiser weight. Love some Pete Dunn. Damn, we have a dreadful looking Drew McIntyre basic. This guy looks like he's four feet tall. This looks like the tiniest Drew McIntyre of all time. You may not be able to tell on camera, but he's tiny and it looks like his head's massive. This is a dreadful basic. I hate this, so that's good. All right. If I, if my memory serves me correctly, this is an Elite 65 Roman Reigns, which was probably the best figure from Elite Series 65. I always liked this head sculpt. I know it's old now, but for the time, this guy was killing it. His shoulder tattoo is rubbed to hell. God, man. I know you need to pay attention to the listing, but I swear, I, I, I gotta go back and check the listing, but we do have Elite 65 Roman Reigns. You have an Elite Rock figure, and this figure, I can't tell. I don't think this is the Elite 69 Collector's Edition, but it might be. Got the gold gear in there. Single jointed arms. It might be. I, I'll have to check uh, check on that. Next up is Elite 71, I think it is. Big Show figure. I'm honestly shocked that the ponytail's intact. Given every other piece of information or figure in this box has been damaged heavily, this guy's actually in surprisingly decent shape, and his ponytail is still intact. That's a miracle for this. Great figure, very underrated. I mean, God in heaven, man. Look at this Seth Rollins right here. This top pick Seth Rollins. Paints all chipped to hell. Loose-ass abs. Knees 
Wrists, legs, one knee pad, shoulders all beat out. This looks like somebody just threw it at the wall 17 times in a row. Oh, Jesus. Moving on, man. We have one of the worst elites of all time. And I know I feel like I've said that three times in this video already. It is the WrestleMania 36 Elite Edge, which is a dreadful piece. Way too jacked. Head sculpt was terrible. Looks nothing like Edge. Look at that right there. Oh, my. At least we have some pants here. I could use some parts maybe on this guy, but this figure caught a lot of flack in real life when it released. And it was well deserved. I mean, look at him. Ooh, we have a classic here, man. We have a basic Hideo Itami figure, which has a great looking head sculpt. I always like this figure. Could possibly use this for parts, turn him into an elite fix-up or something like that. I think that may be something that I try to do. Shouldn't be that difficult. I think I can swing that, so we do have a Deo Atami. Just getting this head sculpt is something I can work with. We have one of the shelf warmers. I feel like I've seen this Becky Lynch everywhere on the planet. We have this shelf warming Becky Lynch basic, which isn't bad. I actually like this head sculpt a lot. It's one of her better head sculpts, and I like the ponytail. Hell of a lot better than the Ultimate Edition, I can tell you that, Brad. I don't think I've ever seen this John Cena basic before, but it is just the orange shirt, which isn't, you know, you may have been like, oh, I can't wait to see this John Cena. It's just a run-of-the-mill one, but I never saw this in person. Not the most exciting figure of all time, but pretty cool to see. And the last figure in this bag before we move on to our last bag is going to be this sort of basic version of the Network Spotlight Undertaker, which has kind of the eye makeup. It's a very, it's actually a decent looking basic figure, but his left shoulder is kind of busted, but not a bad figure overall. All right, man, we are moving into our final bag over here, and then I'll line everything up and you guys can tell me if it was worth it. Now, sometimes you gotta risk it to get the biscuit. But next up is the Elite Series 67, I think it is, Randy Orton. Always like this figure. I like the head sculpt. I like the tattoos. Not the greatest gear. You know, it's the dark blue with the black. But it, it was a, certainly a good figure when it released. I also like the jacked arms. That's solid little Randy Orton Elite. Next up, we have one of my least favorite Elite John Cena's ever. It's the Elite 28. And this one, I never liked the gear. Head sculpt wasn't good. Never cared for the, the shorts color. I think it was way too saturated. Not enough realistic looking. But it's a decent little... John Cena, I guess. Just not my favorite, man. Not my favorite at the slightest. I mean, what? who would have thought this box literally contains so many shish figures from Mattel? It's like the damn best, uh, it's like the greatest hit shish collection. Okay, we got a hit right here. We have a nice looking CM Punk basic figure with a solid little head sculpt. Again, there is some paint chipping, but I can go in and I can actually adjust some of those things. I can fix those things up. They don't bother me that much. Man, dude, a classic CM Punk basic like this is so nice. Not my favorite gear or the most iconic gear, but certainly something that is nice to look at. These are back when basics were the shish, man. You didn't you didn't mess around with these basics. We also have an Ultimate Warrior basic, and I think this specific basic came in a battle pack with Sting, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong there. But it is the America gear. We've seen this in Elite form twice. We had it in the flashback exclusive Walmart exclusive wave, and then we had the Greatest Hits Legends Ultimate Warrior was this exact attire and look. And moving into our last few figures, I did find Cody's weight belt, so that's cool. Our second to last figure is going to be this Alberto Del Rio figure. Not the great greatest, man. I feel like I, oh man, I, I don't know, man. You can let me know what you think, but this head sculpt was not very good. And then the last figure is going to be one of those damn Barbie figures or those Mattels that were kind of like animated. Very unusual. Never, never bought one of these when they were out. I think these were, these might have been Toys R Us exclusive. It is the Nikki Bella or Brie Bella. I don't know. Maybe it looks like Brie, but it kind of looks like Nikki. But we have the Team Bella, Bella's figure here, which is essentially kind of a basic. I mean, I guess she does have kind of a diaphragm for a movement and her belly button's kind of sticking out there but these were catered to little girls I'm pretty sure and they sold in Toys R Us I remember seeing a lot of them they even had play sets and stuff never had one in my collection so this is a first but not a bad little figure here and it's like all single joint it reminds me of like some of those Toy Story figures but let's line everything up and you guys can tell me if it was worth the 200 bucks or not all right, so I set it up here, man. Look what I've done. All right, man, so I need your help. On the right side of the screen, I've laid out what I thought was valuable. You could probably split it, like, right at where Ciampa is in the middle, and everything to the right of Ciampa is what I would deem either good figures or figures I'm excited about or ones that are really nice and in solid enough condition. And then on the left side, you have ones that are in either really poor condition or they're not that valuable or they're terrible in terms of what I thought upon, upon their release or something like that. But at the end of the day, I think it's pretty solid. I think if you... I can't remember how many figures this is it's like 40 plus maybe or something like that i think it's 40 figures total if every single figure sold for 10 bucks flat rate whether it's great whether it's bad that would be 400 in value if every single figure sold for 10 bucks 
and that would be double the price of what I paid. So I would make a profit of 200 bucks if I were to sell every single figure or something. So I don't know, pretty decent value here. Again, you guys can let me know. Some of these figures probably would go for more than that, but some of these aren't worth a hill of beans. So that's kind of where I think $200 probably was a fair price, but I would like to know where you guys stand, what you guys think. But again, I, I don't know. When I look at this whole side over here, I'm pretty hyped for it. This all over here, I feel like if you took Champa from the right and said 200 bucks, I think you would be like, okay, that's pretty fair. But then you have all this bonus over here, but all the bonus is kind of trash. So I don't know. But before we get out of here, a huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. Thank you guys so very much for your continued support. You guys are absolutely incredible. Thank you guys so very much for your support on the channel. Love each and every one of you guys, but I am getting the hell out of here. I hope you guys did enjoy the big unboxing, sort of a classic style unboxing where we just kind of sit back and unbox a massive box of figures. But I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at My Damn Toys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later. <laughs>